What's up, guys? Your boys are back. I'm Ryan, my man, George. What's shaking, guys? How you living out there, man? Shout out to the free thinkers, of course. Yeah, man. But before we get into it, shout out to today's sponsor, which is Keeps. Keeps is a online subscription service dedicated to help men keep their hair. Their treatment plans are doctor recommended and they're delivered straight to your door for about half the cost of a traditional pharmacy. Now, they say that two out of every three men will lose their hair by the time they're 35. Now, case in point is your boy. <laughs> I'm in that category. But if you're fortunate enough to still have your hair, this is something that can definitely make sure you have healthy hair. And Keeps also has a team of available physicians available just to help you out because everyone's hair loss journey is, is, is different. So that team is always gonna be available for you. 24 seven customer service. And of course, this is an award winning formula that Keeps offers as well. So hair loss stops with Keeps. So if you guys are interested, make sure you use our link in the description to get 50% off your first order. That's keeps.com forward slash L-I-V. So again, that's keeps.com forward slash L-I-V to make sure you keep the hair that you have. So George, man, I think this is it, man. Stay away to heaven. I think this is the last song of the Led Zeppelin Marathon. Yeah. Um, we looked at the time on this. He said eight minutes. Yeah, that's that's fitting. Yeah. <laughs> that's fitting for, for a final. Absolutely. Had to do it though, right? Yeah, yeah, we had to, man. Had I to, think man. it was a huge request, man. Everyone is like, dude, you you just, it would be a, tra one dude said it would be a travesty yeah. if you do not do this song. So we got to get that done. A couple honorable mentions though is a Lemon Song. I saw that in the comments a lot. Um, shout out to Elena, man. I had a real good conversation. One of our subs from uh, Patreon. She's been rocking with us for a while. We appreciate that. And she kind of was like, ah, that might be something you guys can take a look at. But uh, another one I think is called You Shook Me was another song that people were like, maybe you should kind of look at that song because it's got like a bluesy-ish type of sound. And maybe you guys will like that as far as groove. So uh, maybe we'll check that out on our own personal time, but uh, we got to get Stairway to Heaven. We got to get this one done, guys. You know? So let's get into it, man. Without further ado. Yeah, man. Led Zeppelin, Stairway to Heaven.
right, guys. You know your boy's going to have to keep it a thousand with you. Keep it honest, man. Um, I'm listening to this song, and I know that there's a story of some sort going on here. I know there is. Uh, but it's very hard for me to engage because I'm trying to really um, understand what's going on here musically. Because this is the number one trending song by Led Zeppelin. So I'm like, they they have to this bring is it. This one. This is... A couple of you guys said this would be a travesty for you guys not to do this song. So I'm hoping that there's going to be some crazy transition and, and something iconic is going to happen musically. Or maybe I'm just not astute enough to realize what's going on. That could be because I'm not a musician. But you know what this sounds like to me, George? What? what does it sound like? Because you know I'm an analogy guy, guys. You know, um, And I'm going to give you another sports analogy. I know you guys are probably like, oh boy, here we go. But you know, man, you remember when motherfuckers were shooting the ball underhanded with, with basketball and shit? You know, and the, and, the, and the actually the NBA logo is Jerry West. And this is not the shit on Jerry West, but that shit should be, as um, uh, Stephen A. Smith would say, it should be Michael Jordan. It really should be. Or someone that transcended the game. Michael and Jordan what, better cut us a check. Yeah. Because <laughs> I keep saying Yo, cut, cut us a check, Mike. Send, us, send, send us some sneakers or something, man. You're getting a lot of love on this channel. But oh, all man. I'm saying is, is Led Zeppelin, it sounds like, based on what we've heard so far, it sounds like they innovated a sound. They innovated and inspired yes. other people to take that shit and Michael Jordan it. You know, that's what it sounds like to me. To me, this is like an underhand fucking layup to me. You know what I'm saying? It's like, nah, this ain't it, bro. I'm sorry. This is just not it. You know, this is not. So far. So far. So, I'm going to keep it. I'm, I'm going to keep it. But this is kind of the, the it, this is difficult for me, guys. So, what do you think of the song, though? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything to say, man. Let's, uh, let's just keep it going, man. Rings of smoke through the trees and the voices of those
They picked it up. I will say they picked it up at the end, man. Um, because the, the ending part I did like. Yeah. I have to be honest. The ending part I was like, okay. Right around the six minute mark. Yeah, that that was hot. That was hot. That was hot. I'm not I'm not going to uh deny that. But it was a little too late for me. You know, George, man, there's certain things in life that are that are iconic. There's just an iconic moment in life, right? Kind of like a a spaceship taking off. That's a that's a huge ordeal, right? You know, it's taking off from 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 Houston and you know the, you see the countdown and this and that. And so that's the kind of anticipation that I had for this song because it was this is like one of their crown jewels, right? And you know when uh, a spaceship takes off, they have to use so much fuel to to take off because it's huge, right? And and I think that's fitting for something that's iconic. You see this massive amount of smoke, you hear this big ass explosion, and you're seeing the spaceship go up, and it's and it's they're trying to get up to speed, and then when they actually get the correct altitude and they get out in the atmosphere and you know in space, it mellows out. To me, the inverse happened here. We're out in space first, you know, and I'm like, okay, when is the iconic thing going to happen? Because this is an iconic song. I would have rather that last part be first and kind of fade out into the slower, uh, subdued parts of this song. At least listening to this song in 2020, because we have the perspective that I guess a lot of people didn't have when this came out, that this is their crown jewel and stuff like that. So it, it's almost like when people um, tell you a movie is so great. This movie is so great, you gotta go see it, you gotta go see it, and it's this, and it's this, and, and it may be a good movie, but then you see it, the expectation is so great, and then you see it, you're like, that's it? That, that's that's what y'all were talking about? I really wanted to end this marathon on a high note, And man. I can co-sign that. But, man, um, to give you another, another analogy, guys, I, I obviously you guys know I love basketball, and I've watched basketball my whole life, so I'm very familiar with that. I remember when I first started seeing Euro players come, on, come over with the Euro step. And that was so foreign to me. And I don't know if you guys know what that is, but it's a, it's a move that's unorthodox in basketball, but it's very, it's very uh, effective. It's think, very effective. Think Mono Ginobili. Yes. Think yes. Of him. And it's very, very effective, but it wasn't pretty to me because it was foreign. It was very foreign. So until I started seeing other players that I can identify with, like the Dwayne Wades and stuff like that, and they did it in a way that looked cool quote unquote cool to me and i'm like wow that's something that's um that maybe i could kind of get behind now and maybe i had to see it from a player that i identify with that i'm familiar with to see that it's effective but it was always very productive effective very uh fundamental uh to them to, yeah, to people uh, in, in europe so i'm 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 trying to take myself out of it and my bias out of it and understand that this band was so influential in so many different uh bands and so many so much music that we hear now that we have we are oblivious we didn't even know that it came from led zeppelin you know so yep. this band is obviously iconic so i guess guys what i'm saying is led zeppelin is great we, we all know that you can't they can't do what they did and not be great even if i don't like the majority of the songs that we did in this uh marathon but this is the question I got for you guys, man. Um, and then this is going to be a hard question because I really want to understand. I'm really trying to ask this for, I'm coming from the standpoint of trying to understand. So please see it that way. So the question that I have, guys, is, is Led Zeppelin great because of the influence they've done? Or are they truly great because of the music they put out? Does that make sense? I mean, because I really want you to understand that question and really think about that. Because based on what I'm hearing, I think they're great because they were the first to do it. So they inspired people. I don't know if they're great because of the music that I, just the, the songs that I've listened to, I don't know if they're great because of the music they put out. I think that's a really great question, man, because it really forces you to, to go beyond your bias. Because if we were doing something that, that I love, I love... R&B, I love rap, and it, th there's some artists that are near and dear to my heart. If someone asked me that, if, if songs, I said, this is a crown jewel, and I had you listen to it, and you were like, man, is it great because they influenced rap, or is it great because they make great music? Those are two different things. You know what I mean? Because I could be the first to do something, but not be great at it. 
but I influenced everybody so I get the credit that I'm great. Hopefully this inspires some good conversation, man, and good good uh, comments because I really want, I'm really just trying to understand. I'm coming from a standpoint of, of trying I to understand. I love that though, man. You know what I'm saying? So I love the, the, the care that you, that you took with that, Ryan. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, because... I hope they see it that way. <laughs> yeah. Before, before we started this marathon, I mean, since we started the channel, I mean, we do, we did a Led Zeppelin video and that shit got a million views on it. A million views. Yep. We only have but so many of those. That's Even true. We deserve more, but you ain't, I ain't going to get into that. <laughs> but we only have but so many of those. That's true. You know what I mean? So that's the million view club for our channel is, is, is very special to us, right? And I think it really speaks to uh, how massive and influential a band is when a million of their followers are willing to watch two guys that don't know shit. Exactly. Uh, about. That's a great point. Beginnings and where they come great from point. and what they're about. So they clearly are extremely important um, in in the sort of the the evolution of music, um, and they will be forever solidified, regardless of what yep. we think. That's true. <laughs> in history, they're yep. in the Hall of Fame, gold stars across the board. I yes, just want to make sure that that's clear. Yes. For me, this song, man, getting to the song, Ryan, I, I, I really enjoyed. Um, your space analogy and saying that it was sort of the reverse. Like we were in space and then this shit came crash. I mean, whatever. Yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? I wish it would have been the opposite. I completely get that. Yeah. Uh, this song to me is all about payoff, man. Um, it, it's I kind of look at that in a slightly differently, but the, kind of the same as well. It's just, um, I was really, I remember hearing the song. I mentioned that, but it's been a while. And um, I remember the song being more upbeat. So what that's telling me is that I probably, like, made whoever I was around <laughs> that was listening to this song was probably only playing the, that, last, the part. last part of it. Gotcha, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I remember this being, I was like, I thought that this was a lot more upbeat um, from what I remember when I was like 15 or something like that. And I'm just thinking more often than not, people are banging a laugh from six minutes <laughs> yeah. to eight minutes. People are banging that. And that's just what I got. I just, I was really, it's just a big, big buildup. And the question is, for this song, that's going to make it, either great for you or not, or just kind of like in the middle, is does it pay off at the end? And I'm going to tell you something. At that last part was excellent. Yeah, I, I love, so too. love, love the drumming in there with John Bonham, and I love the way Robert Plant's voice um, sounded, actually. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know what? This style of singing, this sort of folklore, mythical, I'm not saying this is a folklore song, but it has yeah. this sort of folky <laughs> feeling to it, and I think that that probably fits him better. You know what I mean? And to Ryan's point, and I've kind of hit it around to it myself, you know, blues, what we're used to hearing, man, there's a certain depth and tone and grit yeah. that that just yeah. is 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 rooted in the heart of blues. Like it comes from that. You know what I'm saying? So anything that's derived from that, that's not really speaking to the core of it, is people who really love that shit and grew up with it is gonna look at that like this dude is not, he's not really pulling it off like we are right like, accustomed to hearing it's like the song was made in 1971, but then they're aging it a bit more with the the approach. Uh, because yeah. it feels like a 13th, 14th century Robin Hood. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it has that type of feel to me. Yeah, I you hear know, you though. I hear you. If this is in a play, you know, and you could see someone acting out, you know, um, what he was singing about in a play, and I get that. I yeah. really, really love what yeah. they did at the end. Everybody, the bass, everyone, Robert's yeah. voice, um, yeah, Jimmy cool. Page, everyone, John on the drums. I love that. It's probably the best I've heard overall. That section is arguably the best I've heard from him throughout this entire marathon. So that's how, how much of an impact that had on me. Yeah. I really loved that. But it was just too, um, too sort of long and drawn out without much, um, much in the music that really interested me for too long for that last part to save it. Hey, I hear you, brother, because we almost tapped out. But also, I'm sure the lyrics played a very, very important part to why this song is so uh, play, and an yep. important part to why yeah. this song is so beloved. Yep. I mean, from what it says here, it's saying that, um, you know, Stairway to Heaven, it tells the story of a greedy woman who is overly optimistic about her uh, unpromising future, you know, and I guess she's essentially, um, she was greedy, she tried to buy her, buy her way yeah. into heaven, and I, I get that there's a lesson to be learned there. You know what I mean? I, and I get all that. But I couldn't even get into it. And that's kind of tough for me. Usually I really yeah. like to dig into the lyrics. Yeah. But that part just really didn't grab me anyway musically. And I couldn't even get into it. But guys, just to end it, man. One thing I wanted to point out, man, before we end this video is um, I want to point something out. I know that when one of us doesn't like a song that you guys just sort of like loop the other person in with what they think. <laughs> it's happened when I've not liked the song and y'all and you guys I've seen in the comments like, oh, you guys don't like it. I'm like, did you watch the video? Sometimes <laughs> Ryan doesn't like a song. That has nothing to do with me. And yeah. Sometimes I like a song that has nothing to do with Ryan. So don't let our one of our opinions right. overpower um, what we as a channel think about a group. 
I think I like Led Zeppelin. Yeah. I, I, and if I'm being honest, I think you guys see that. Uh, I mean, I love them as opposed to some of the other bands that we've done, the Alice yeah. Chains of the World, the Gojiras and the Metallicas. So maybe that's what's making you think that we just both don't like this band at all. Yeah. But, you know, no, nah, I've liked, I've enjoyed this marathon and I can see their creativity. I can see their influence. And I really admire when bands take chances. And I and I, I, I see it. I see the chances that they took. I see the orchestra. Yeah. I hear the orchestra in Kashmir. And I, and I hear the groove in John's drumming and the bass work by John Paul JPJ. And I could tell that they're very good musicians. Mm -hmm. And I, t I could tell that uh, Robert Plant took a blues foundation and was very, very experimental with it. And it's not going to be for everybody. So, yep. I, again, I, I appreciate what these guys did. And I like a, a, a decent amount of songs that we've done out of this marathon. Yep. So that's and, my feeling of Led Zeppelin. And I just want to add to that really quick. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. even if we don't like it, that doesn't mean don't suggest songs that sound like that. Yeah. Because I really want to make that point. Because we we've both demonstrated that... We've liked songs that we typically wouldn't like. And Ryan, you were basically saying that um, you know, we've kind of shown that we can we can like songs that's probably outside of what we typically like. I know mm -hmm. that there's sort of a pattern of what we, we, we what we right. say we like. But I think of Numa, man. Numa's a song that I'm not sure that either of us really would have gravitated to had we not um started this channel. Man, let me tell you Opeth something. Opeth Blackwater Park with fucking growls in it. You Dude. know what I mean? Growls. Even though I'm not so not big on growls, but overall I enjoy that song. What was the band? It was it Neo Blivis Karis? I think it was uh, in mm. Plagues. Neo Blivis Karis, I believe that was a uh, earlier when we kind of started doing metal. That was a progressive, yeah, uh, a metal band. I think they're from Australia. Yep. Who had so many different elements in their music, and I believe they had growls, if I'm not mistaken, in their music, and we enjoyed that yep. early on. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we've shown the capacity to enjoy music that just doesn't fit this sort of box that and, you guys think we have. And dude, uh, fucking Numa, yeah. dude, that is one of my favorite songs ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ever. That's crazy. Ever. I, fuck genres. I don't genres. think I've ever... He, he's fuck ever. genres. You know what I'm saying? Seriously. That is one of my favorite songs ever mm -hmm. that constantly gets played in my house. Constantly. He does play that song, though. Seriously, dude. Yeah. So I didn't, know it, was one, I didn't, you, I didn't know it was one of his favorite songs ever. That's crazy. Dude, that is cra That's a big deal, man. Yeah, it is. And it's, I'm glad you said that. And that's man. outside of my wheelhouse, big time. That's not funky. That's not the funky sort of bluesy undertone that you yeah. guys think that we own. That's the only thing we love. That's not that. Has the long guitar, yeah. part, guitar riff in there. But for the most part, that song, I would think, would be completely away from what you guys think. We it's the like, foundation of what yeah, we love. Yeah, that's true. So it's possible. Everybody has their sort of their, their core of what they like. But it doesn't mean that anything outside that core is just... Uncharted territory. It, it we're, is. Never, we're never fucking like it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We've been pretty open. We, we, listen, we both yeah. listen to a very, very wide range of music. And um, I can point to any genre. In any classical, I can point to some opera songs that I've liked. I, anything you yeah. can think of, I can tell you some shit that I've liked from it. So keep that in mind, guys. And don't let this like discourage, just, just discourage you from... Um, requesting songs that may be a like, a like this or even other Led yep. Zeppelin songs or, you know, it's about the journey anyway and opening our minds up to, to new and different things, man. So that's kind of what we've done, I feel like, the, since we started the channel. You Big know time. I mean? Big time, so, man. That's it, man. Salute to uh, the iconic Led Zeppelin. Yes, man. sir. No Can't take feelings. anything away from them, dude. Yeah, man. Nothing. Again, I don't dislike this band. Do I love them like I've loved other bands? Is there probably other bands that I would probably listen to a little bit before Led Zeppelin? Absolutely. Yeah. But from what I've heard, I can get back and get with some stuff that they do, man. So, yeah, man. so all love, all appreciate it. We appreciate everybody that participated in the marathon. Yes, sir. If you guys enjoyed that, let us know in the comments how you feel. Sorry if I'm long-winded. I know we were a little long-winded on this one, but I really wanted to make sure that you guys understood certain things based off of kind of what we see in the comments. Yep. So appreciate you guys for tuning in. That's it. I'm George. That's Ryan Las Vegas. We out. We out.